I think in this time together, we should focus back on Jesus, how Jesus was connected. He was the demonstration of God's love. Jesus is the demonstration of a human being receiving identity from God and walking in the truth of that identity. And Jesus is the demonstration of love of others, love of enemy, love of others. Jesus, when he's baptized and he comes out of the water and he receives the Holy Spirit and he's, he receives his identity from God, this is my son who I love and in whom I'm well pleased. It says that the Spirit implored him or pushed him. And so in his identity and in the fullness of the Spirit in connection with God, he now has a direction, right? Because his being now is informing doing. And the very first place that Jesus is sent by God in connection with God and the Spirit is into the wilderness, which, which is really interesting, into a place of negative emotion. And after fasting for 40 days, then to meet the enemy. And you wouldn't think, why is the very first thing that Jesus does in the truth of his identity in sort of ministry mode is to go directly to face the tempter, the liar himself. Why do you think that is? Why it seems like if God really loved us, he wouldn't let that happen, right? right? He would be protecting us from all of that. And it's really beautiful and brilliant. One is so that Jesus in his humanity would never be confused about who the real enemy was. If you don't know that Satan is your only enemy, then you'll blame, you'll start thinking other people are your enemy and it's never true. And Jesus would have good cause to believe that the Pharisees were his enemy yeah. because they're always accusing and attacking. Or Rome. Or the, or the ones that are falsely accusing you and murdering you are your enemy. But in truth, that's, those aren't the enemy. His only real enemy is the lie, the liar. Mm. And so when he's on the cross and he looks out on those who are falsely accusing him and murdering him, he says to God, Father, forgive them because these don't know what they're doing. Like they, they don't know what they're doing. They're broken, they're wounded, they're acting out of their own woundedness, and they think this is a good idea what they're doing. They really don't know what they're doing and that allows for their forgiveness. The liar, however, that's a different story. The lie is, it's a scheme, it's, it's the enemy. And so Jesus needs to know the liar is your enemy. And the liar will tell you everyone else is the enemy except the lie. And so that's really one of the reasons Jesus faces the enemy, the liar. That's one. So we have to remember we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. What we're wrestling against is principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. We're wrestling against the lie itself. And in Ephesians 6, it says, stand firm against the scheme right. of the enemy. It is that armor passage, but it's not saying to fight, it's saying to stand firm. And it actually says it four times. Right. So it must be really important, stand firm against the scheme of the enemy. Of the enemy, right. And then the first part of the armor is the belt of truth. Right, in what's true. And we've talked a lot about what's true and that your perception is not always true and the truth is not always your perception. But right. this is the scheme of the enemy. Right. In our lives to rob us of our identity and destiny by tempting us to believe things that aren't true. That aren't true, right. So when you start blaming others, you're already in the wrong battle. Right. Like you're already off track and, and you're already disconnected. So that's one thing to understand as humans, we have one enemy and it's the liar and the scheme is deception and accusation. So the next thing Jesus observes, what are the strategies of the enemy? The strategy of the enemy are only two, deception and accusation. That's a good reminder. And I just wanna remind everyone who told you that right. when Adam and Eve are hiding, fear, guilt, and shame, were naked and were ashamed? Who told you that? Right. My example, who's telling you that you're stupid? Right. Who's telling you that? When you say, I am stupid, it's both a deception and an accusation yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And that's, that's how it works. The deception accuses. And so the way we know it's not the voice of God is God never accuses humanity. Never. Satan is the accuser of humanity. God never accuses us of things, right? Mm. God challenges us to be the truth of who we are. So the enemy uses deception and accusation. That's the enemy's only two weapons against us. 
So then our strategy against deception and accusation is not perseverance and grit and, and, and sharing your faith and Bible study. It's what Jesus does every time the enemy goes to deceive and accuse him is his weapon is truth. It's just truth. People think, well, he, Jesus quoted Bible verses to Satan, so he ran away. Satan's not afraid of the Bible. He quotes the Bible all the time. Yeah. That's, he's not wow. afraid of it. What he can't stand is truth telling. He has no capacity to stand against what's true, and that's what causes him to flee. So you shall know and experience the truth, and the truth will set you free. So one enemy, Satan the liar, the strategy of the enemy, accusation and deception, very clear not complicated. Am I feeling accused right now? Not God. How does deception make me feel? Fear, guilt, and shame. Like that's what- that, Not that's from God. Negative emotion. There it is. Pay attention. Go back to God like this. And then it's the way the enemy comes at Jesus is super fascinating because Jesus isn't surprised by the enemy. He, he can see the enemy coming. Mm. And, and one thing this is, is telling us as humans is the enemy comes to us from the past, from behind. We don't see the enemy coming. And the accusation is from the past. And so the enemy can sneak up on us because we're not whole in the past. We're wounded, we're broken and fractured in the past. And so healing is what you're talking about. It's God taking us back into the past and redeeming it back to David writing in the Psalms, I will remember where God was in the past yes. and I will yet praise you. So the goal then is that there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus because when the enemy tries to attack us from the back, it's no longer broken there. And we can say, oh, I remember the time that I was thinking I was stupid standing in line. No, I remember Jesus. And that memory becomes something that moves us forward in the present. It's a joyful memory It's a joy. It becomes a joyful. And so like the cross, the cross is meant to be a place of shame and horror and fear. And yet Jesus has made it the greatest symbol of our victory, right? So the, the place of our shame becomes- The icon of the our redemption. The icon of our redemption. So the enemy takes us back and says, remember when you did this and you fell apart and you're not worthy? Yeah, but I remember that. I remember what Jesus said about that. And so the enemy doesn't want to take you there anymore because it's joyful, right? He's redeemed it and there's no more condemnation. So it's of no value to the enemy. So what's happening in effect as we get well, because when you're a little kid, you don't know these things, but as you mature in community, in connection with God, understanding your identity, then you can work through the past and it becomes whole and well and moves you into the future. And so what happened is the enemy can no longer come from your past, but the enemy will not stop. So what the enemy will do is always come from the front then, but we can see him coming. We can see the enemy coming, so we're not caught off guard. Tell it's, us how, how can we see him coming? Well, it's because we've learned the strategy of the enemy's accusation and deception. And we've learned the way he comes at each one of us. Like for me, my greatest fear is that I'm a disappointment. But I've worked so much in connection with others and with the Lord and myself, and the Lord just walking me through where that lie came from and redeeming those memories so that I can now say that I'm a disappointment without fear. Mm. And so when I'm in a situation and I start to feel that negative emotion, I can say to the enemy, I already know this, this is, not, this is not surprising to me. You're gonna say I'm a disappointment. I know, I get that. Here's the thing, I know I'm not. And I know I'm not because every time I thought I was, Jesus was with me. And so it keeps the enemy up here. And what I'm doing, the strategy I'm using is when the enemy comes with the old, the enemy's not creative. It's the old accusation. That's right. You're a disappointment, you're stupid. I can submit to God immediately. Like here he comes, you're a disappointment. I'm gonna submit that to God right now. And when I submit that negative emotion to God or that scenario to God, I'm 
organically resisting the enemy. That submission is the resistance. People think, I just gotta resist the enemy. Like you're done, yeah, you've already right. lost, you've and already lost. And then it's just willpower. The enemy will take willpower any day. But when I submit myself to God, I'm saying I'm bowing down to the truth of God and what God says about me in connection to him. Over, it's over, the enemy's resisted and he will flee. Yeah. But it requires that we keep the enemy in front of us and that's constantly using negative emotion as valuable to take away any deception and accusation that comes from the past. So the enemy will always come. No one in the New Testament is surprised by the enemy. It's so interesting. They're not afraid of Satan. They're not confounded by evil. When persecution comes, they're like, what's wrong? What do we do wrong? They go right to God and say, tell us what to do with the persecution. They keep it all right in front of them. They bring it right to God and say, we're being persecuted. What do you want us to know about this? And what do you want us to do? And God guides them through it and the persecution becomes a blessing, a growth, yes. right? Rather than we all cower and break down and hide and say God's mad at us and right. this kind of thing. Right, and this is just the way it's gonna be. And Right, so in summary, one enemy, the liar. The enemy only uses accusation and deception. The enemy wants to come from the past. And so by submitting to God, negative emotion, we keep the enemy in front. No condemnation in the past. The past moves us forward in the present. And when the enemy comes, we submit to God immediately in God's truth. That resists the enemy and the enemy will flee. And this is the discipline we walk in. Never surprised that here we go again with the enemy. Thank you for being with us on this journey of hope through depression. I encourage you to listen to this over and over again and get the principles in your mind. You'll actually be changing neural pathways in your brain as you intentionally practice connecting to God, connecting to yourself, and connecting to others in love in your true identity.